Hi, I'm Jeff Gribby. I'm the effects lead on Vader Immortal at ILMX Lab. I started on ILMX Lab in 2018, and prior to that, I was with Industrial Light and Magic for 18 years, working on over 40 films, ranging from Star Wars to Marvel films and beyond. One thing that keeps me driven is pushing the limits of art and technology, and that's why I'm excited to be a part of ILMX Lab. I get an opportunity to bring my experience in the film industry into VR. ILMX Lab is Lucasfilm's immersive entertainment division. Since 2015, ILMX Lab has been on the forefront of pushing the convergence between film and VR as an immersive form of storytelling. A member of the Lucasfilm family, ILMX Lab has the talent to create cinematic VR experiences in every aspect from sound, performance, to art, and award-winning visual effects. ILMX Lab works with real-time rendering graphics, and Epic is an incredibly important technology partner in that front. Our companies share a same ambition, to bring cinematic quality, real-time experiences to life. And Unreal Engine is a key tool in this endeavor for us. Early on in ILMX Lab's history, the team began exploring this new genre of immersive storytelling on various platforms. We knew we wanted to do something new and to continue Lucasfilm and ILM's legacy of world-class storytelling and cutting-edge technology. ILMX Lab's experiments in virtual reality provided us the foundation for our studio to tell a compelling, immersive, interactive story about Darth Vader in VR. Development on Vader Immortal really took shape when Oculus came on board with the Oculus Quest. With their hardware, you have six degrees of freedom, and it's completely untethered. That allowed us to understand where and how to take our creative development. For example, a true 360-degree immersive experience with lightsabers. We're always focused on crafting the right story for the right platform. The first part in a three-part series, Vader Immortal Episode 1, released in spring on the Oculus Quest and the Oculus Rift. It's a highly cinematic experience, a linear narrative with compelling interactions, one that puts you inside the Star Wars universe as the center role of the character in the story instead of just watching it on the screen. Today, I'm going to share with you some of the visual developments that went into Episode 1. But first, let's take a look at our trailer. Finally found his candidate. And our future is in your hands. Vida is here. You are the one I've been searching for. Do as I command. Is there any version of this plan that doesn't end up with us being dead? So, how do we go about bringing engaging film quality VFX into a VR experience? Well, maybe to answer that, we should probably ask ourselves first three questions. First, what? What VFX elements work well in a VR story? Do they add to the reality? Are they engaging and interactive? 
and can they trigger an emotion or reaction? How? How are we going to make it? Well, we know at ILM we're capable of delivering high-quality cinematic visuals for film, but can we deliver the same in real time? And lastly, how do we make it for the hardware we have? Will it be performant on those devices? Our top priority is a hitch-free experience, else all the work that we've put into our experience will be overshadowed by poor performance, pulling you out of the reality that we work so hard to create. And we cannot have that. First and foremost, we want this to be a fun and exciting experience. And that comes from you driving the experience. You're the hero of our story, and we want our visuals to support that. Speaking of you driving the experience, we want visuals that engage you. We want visuals you can participate and interact with. And it's that interaction that pulls you deeper into our story. And we want to provide you a chance to interact with some of the iconic Star Wars assets you've come to know and love. We aim to deliver the highest quality visuals possible. Lucasfilm is known for pushing the, the boundaries of art and technology. We spend considerable time polishing and refining our assets to capture those little details from the films. For example, the holograms. We wanted to match that exact vector graphic look from the 70s. The, prits, the, fulz, the prits, bleh, fritzes, pulses, glitches, and sound effects you've come to recognize. We want visuals that will help enhance the mood of the story, cause an emotion inside of you, fear, awe, wonder. We want to stimulate this. It was a treat early on when we got to watch recordings of our focus testers physically reacting to some of the moments in Vader Immortal. It was those reactions that let us know we were doing our job right. We aimed to create richly detailed world to immerse you in. Part of what makes that environment feel real is its complexity. In the Mustafar arrival sequence, we had over 60 elements added to enrich the scene. Lucasfilm is known for creating a richly detailed universe. And here, we get an opportunity to bring it to life. We had over 400 particle effects crafted for Vader Immortal, each designed specifically to enhance the story. We wanted our visuals to continue our push for innovative forms of storytelling. The quill sequence was one of our most stunning and technically challenging moments to bring to life. A true combination of art and cutting-edge tech featured live brushstrokes painted, animated, and shaded by a talented team of artists. It's a live work of art flowing before your eyes. So how do we make all of these visuals in real time? In the film industry, I'm accustomed to generating a lot of images and then later assembling them all together. And this is no different. We need a similar approach. We relied heavily on Unreal Sequencer to compose most of the cinematic moments in vi inside Vader Immortal. As in film, this was a project that was crafted and polished through iterations, so we needed tools to do so. To me, Unreal Sequencer is a real-time compositing suite capable of managing large amounts of data, and we had a lot on this project. As for the elements, the goal was always photoreal. But beyond just looking real, the elements had to behave and act realistically. It's that last bit why we couldn't pre-render all of our elements and place them onto cards. They appeared fake without proper depth and motion. Or our audience has the ability to walk around the environment. It, they can tell what's real and what's not. And some of the effects you could actually hold within your hands. We wanted to simulate as closely as possible the natural characteristics and behaviors you would expect. Holding a simulation I crafted in VR for the first time was a game changer for me. There were so many new ways I could look at and experience the detail I had put into my work. As for me, as an artist, it's a new frontier to explore. In our more cinematic moments, we needed to deliver consistent behavior, on re consistent behavior reliably deliverable in the same impactful moments. I was a little concerned about this in real time. I was happy to see all the modules in Cascade containing references to seeded operations. It's a core component in film VFX, having the ability to generate consistent results. Finally, we need an approach to deliver on two platforms with two very different performance capabilities. 
we didn't have the time or resource to develop two different solutions. Again, this is where Unreal provided us an efficient workflow. We were able to leverage Unreal's project scalability configurations to tailor solutions per platform and hardware. For example, we utilize our particles level of detail system, which is typically used for distance-based lotting, to allow us to customize and override specific SIM parameters just for the quest. This way, we avoided duplicating our work and causing a lot of branches. And that would have been a tremendous amount of work. Our vision from the start was to deliver a common quality experience on both of Oculus's platforms with the same immersive fidelity. And I believe we achieved our goal. It took a careful approach to achieve this, and Unreal provided us the tools to do so. So that's a little look into how we created some of the visuals for Vader Immortal with Unreal Engine. Here's a clip of our final segment. It was one of the most demanding sequences we had to put together. It had over six minutes of motion cap footage, cloth sims, a moving environment, and loads of effects, both dynamic and staged. We used all of the tools and tech we had learned in the process to bring a dramatic conclusion to the first episode. I'm really looking forward to showing you the next chapter of Vader Immortal. We've really got some innovative tech in the next episode that's really going to enhance the experience further. I'm excited about the future of VR storytelling. We have the tech, we have the hardware, and in ILMX Lab, we have the unique, innovative form of storytelling. So I'm excited to see where we're going to take this medium next. And I'm excited to be a part of this really talented team of artists, engineers, and production staff that relentlessly worked to bring Vader Immortal into a reality. I'm proud to be here representing them today. And this project would not be possible if it wasn't for our partnership with Oculus and Unreal. And special thanks to our content partners abroad, Ninja Theory. Thank you, guys. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them offside. <laughs>